Welcome back to another iceberg video. Today I will be going over the Cuphead Iceberg by OK Fly 1879. Without further ado, let's get started. First, we have Studio MDHR, which is the studio that made Cuphead. It's an independent video game company founded by Chad and Jared Moldenhauer. Then there's Cuphead's a Moonshiner, which is a theory made by Game Theory that theorizes that Cuphead makes illegal alcohol. The main evidence for this theory is that in a trailer for the game, Cuphead pours liquid from a bottle with three X's, the marker showing how distilled alcohol is, into his head. Next there's Weapons, which is about how Cuphead has many different types of weapons such as a pea shooter, spread, and chaser. Afterwards we have Cuphead's Difficulty, which is about how Cuphead is very hard because the enemies have a lot of health. Their bullets are hard to dodge, and you only have 3 health. After that we have Glove Inconsistency, which is talking about how in-game Cuphead's gloves are white while on the results screen they are yellow. MDHR did this because in old cartoons, sometimes the gloves were also colored yellow. Next there's Old Cartoons Influence, which is talking about how Cuphead was inspired by many old cartoons from Disney and the Fleischer Brothers. Some examples include Hell's Bells, Swing You Sinners, and Bimbo's Initiation. Then we have run and gun levels, which is talking about levels in Cuphead that are much more like a normal platformer than the usual boss levels. In it, you have to run through a full level and gun down a barrage of enemies in your way. Afterwards, there's the devil, which is the antagonist of Cuphead and the final boss. He won against Cuphead in a game of craps and forced them to collect the soul contracts of other debtors and bring them to him. Lastly, we have console ports, which is talking about how Cuphead was made for computers and then ported to Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PlayStation 4. While you probably knew most of the things on this layer, we're going to get a little more obscure in the tip of the iceberg. First, we have Smash Bros. Appearance, which is talking about how Cuphead was added to Smash Bros. as a costume for the Mii Gunner. It also had the song Floral Fury if you bought the DLC. Then we have Unused Content, which is talking about how Cuphead has a bunch of unused bosses, levels, weapons, and charms. A lot of these can be accessed through the debug menu such as the bosses Patchy Patchy, The Light and Card, and the weapons Arc and Ranger. Next we have Novels, which is talking about the two Cuphead novels that released called Cuphead and Carnival Chaos and Cuphead and A Mountain of Trouble. The first one's about Cuphead trying to get a birthday present for Elder Kettle, and the second's about him going to a summer camp called Camp Hoodenholler. Afterwards, there's Bad Ending, which is about how in the PC and Xbox One versions, if you give the devil the soul contract instead of fighting him, it shows this cutscene. After that, there's Cuphead merchandise, which is talking about how MDHR sells official Cuphead merchandise like posters, shirts, and stickers. After that, there's the Legendary Chalice, which is a character that you find in the mausoleums and have to battle ghosts to free her from an urn. If you free her, you get a new EX move. Then we have Delicious Last Course, which is a Cuphead DLC that's going to come out sometime this year. It seems to add a chef character, a yeti boss, and a playable Legendary Chalice. Afterwards, there's Tesla Port, which is talking about how you can now play Cuphead in a Tesla using the central console touchscreen. You need to be parked to play the game so we don't end up with Cuphead causing accidents. Lastly, there's Expert Mode, which is talking about how after you beat the game, you can play all the bosses in Expert Mode, which makes the bosses harder and gives them more health. Now it's time for us to dig a little deeper and see what's beneath the surface. <laughs> First, we have what's really in Cuphead's head, which is talking about how Studio MDHR said so the liquid inside Cuphead's head is the essence of his soul. However, since Mugman drinks from his head, either it's actually milk or alcohol, or he's drinking his own soul. Then we have r slash Cuphead, which is a subreddit for Cuphead where people can post memes, fan art, and gameplay videos. Next, we have Cuphead U2s which is a small Funko Pop-like figure that you can buy for $30. Afterwards, we have Mashed's Song, which is talking about a song called Cuphead Cartoon Rap Battle by the YouTuber Mashed, where all the bosses in Cuphead rap about themselves. After that, there's Enchanted Portals, 
which is an upcoming co-op platformer inspired by Cuphead. While the Kickstarter didn't reach its funding goal, the developers said they will not give up, so we may get the game somewhat soon. Next is the Cuphead Show, which is an upcoming Netflix original starring Wayne Brady as King Dice. We don't know when it will come out, but it says it's coming out soon. Then there's Grim Matchstick Mega Man, which is talking about how the boss Grim Matchstick could be based on the Mecha Dragon boss fight from Mega Man 2 as they look very similar. Afterwards, we have Cuphead the Musical, which is a song by the YouTuber Random Encounters featuring Markiplier and Jacksepticeye. In it, all the bosses talk about how they're gonna kill Cuphead. After that, there's Cuphead Rap, which is yet another Cuphead fan-made song, this time by JT Music, where Cuphead raps about how he's able to kill all the bosses. Then there's Fall Guy Skin, which is talking about how you can buy Cuphead and Mugman skins in the game Fall Guys. However, to buy both costumes and a Cuphead emote, you have to win 25 times or get a boatload of XP, which is incredibly difficult. Next, we have Frog Brothers Street Fighters, which is talking about how there are a ton of references to Street Fighters in the Ribby and Croaks boss fight. Some examples are they are wearing similar clothes to Ryu and Ken from that game, their intro animations are based on Ryu and Ken's taunts from Street Fighter 3, and one of their attacks is based on Ryu's Hadouken attack. Lastly, we have Gray and White Filter, which is talking about how if you beat all the run and gun levels without killing any enemies and talk to a turtle that tells you to do that, then you can unlock a gray and white filter, which is a nice reward for a difficult challenge. Now it's time to get to the really obscure stuff in the body of the iceberg. First, there's the art of Cuphead, which shows off the old art for Cuphead before its release and compares it to the current one. Then there's Crisp Apples, which is an animated short made for the launch trailer of the Mac version of Cuphead. Here's a clip. Next we have It's Hand Drawn, which is talking about how all of the art in Cuphead is hand drawn. They had to hand draw 50,000 frames of animation. Now that's impressive. Afterwards, there's the Rupak's real name, which is about how many people believe the names of the Rupak are Motato, Weepy, and Psy Carrot, but actually their names are Sal Sputter, Ollie Bulb, and Chansey Chantanay, according to MDHR. After that, there's Calamaria Fantastic Journey, which is about how the design of the boss Calamaria is based on the mermaid boss from the game Fantastic Parodius, or Fantastic Journey. Next, there's Touch Fuzzy Get a Little Dizzy, which is about how in the patch notes for the 2017 update of Cuphead, MDHR put Touch Fuzzy Get a Little Dizzy, which meant that getting hit by Cagney Carnation's final attack blurs the screen a little. This is a reference to the Yoshi's Island level Touch Fuzzy Get Dizzy. Then there's the very broad Many More References, which covers every reference in Cuphead that I haven't covered so far. Some of these include the devil design being a reference to the devil in Hell's Bells, and Grim Matchstick's name being a reference to Grim Natwick, an animator for Fleischer Studios. Afterwards, there's Pacifist Run and Guns, which seems to be the same as Grey and White Filter. Lastly, there's Super Meat Boy Inspiration, which is talking about how the creators of Cuphead said the success of any games like Super Meat Boy convinced them that a homemade game was worth the time. Let's descend a bit more into the bottom of the iceberg. article by Yusef Cole that I cannot do justice in a couple of sentences. In short, it talks about how Cuphead's 1930s art style reminds him of the racist cartoons made during that time period, and the fact that it's about gambling, something that those cartoons portrayed black people as doing, doesn't help. Then, there's Dr. Call's theme, which is talking about how the song used in the boss fight Dr. Call's Robot is a remixed version of the E3 2014 trailer theme. Next, we have Cuphead.exe, which is a creepypasta game made of Cuphead based on the Sonic EXE creepypasta and fan game. Afterwards, we have Cuphead Graphic Novels, which is talking about a Cuphead graphic novel called Comic Capers and Curios. It is individual comics such as its Graveyard Gauntlet, which is about Cuphead and Mugman going to a graveyard, and Promenade Predicament, which is about Mugman somehow avoiding bosses in Cuphead while reading. 
After that, there's Arby's Toys, which is about how last September, Arby's started offering Cuphead toys with their kids' meals. Then there's Cuphead Arcade Machine, which is talking about how some fans have made Cuphead Arcade Machines, such as this one by Sazavo's Arcades. Next, there's Pork Rind Wonder 3, which is about how the Cuphead character Pork Rind looks like the shopkeeper from the game Wonder Boy 3, The Dragon's Trap, because they're both pigs with eye patches. Lastly, we have Original Concept, which is about how Cuphead's plot was originally going to be about Cuphead using his last dime to enter a tournament, where he had to defeat eight bosses to win. Put on your swimsuits, because it's time to dive into the dark waters. First, we have ACMI Display, which is talking about a Cuphead zoetrope that was installed in the Australian Center for the Moving Image. The zoetrope is an early form of animation where a wheel of frames spins around so that if you focus on one part of it, it looks like it's animating. Next, there's Cuphead Songs and Sketches, which is a CD of Cuphead songs, song demos, piano versions, and two new songs. Then there's No Damage Run, which is talking about how some people have beaten Cuphead without taking any damage, such as the YouTuber Soul, who I'll link in the description. Afterwards, we have Hildeberg, German Zeppelin, which is about how the boss Hildeberg's name is a pun on the Hindenburg, a German Zeppelin that crashed in New Jersey in 1937. After that, there's Big Boss Dog, which is a YouTuber that makes Cuphead challenge videos and top 10 lists. Then there's Coinless, which is about a challenge by Big Boss Dog, where he beats Cuphead without collecting any coins. The hardest part of this challenge is not being able to buy more weapons and charms. Afterwards, we have Worst Weapons on Expert, which is about a challenge by the YouTuber Stupid Butt Gaming, where they beat Expert Mode using terrible weapons like the Chaser. After that, we have Popeye Visits Inkwell Isle, which is about a Popeye comic set in the Cuphead universe that Studio MDHR made to celebrate Popeye's 90th anniversary. In the comic, Popeye and Olive Oil get stuck in the mausoleum in Inkwell Isle. Lastly, we have Wallop's Actual Meaning, which is talking about how one definition of Wallop, the text it shows on screen before a battle, is an alcoholic drink. While this could be a reference to the Cuphead Moonshine theory from Layer 1, it's obvious that it's using the definition to hit something or someone very hard. It's time to descend one last time into the abyss. First, there's Cuphead Vinyl, which is about how Cuphead released a vinyl album with normal songs and some unreleased solos from the songs. Then, there's Swing You Sinners, which is the achievement you get for beating Cuphead, which is based on a 1930s cartoon of the same name. Next, there's Elder Kettle's Past, which is talking about how there's a statue that looks like Elder Kettle in the level Rugged Ridges. So that begs the question, does Elder Kettle do some heroic deed to deserve a statue? Afterwards, there's Who Are the People in Sally's Stage, which is asking if the people in Sally's Stage plays levels such as the priest or the nun are actors, as the level is supposed to be a play. Afterwards, there's Why Some Characters Are Missing, which is talking about how in the good ending, the Root Pack, Goopy Legrand, Wally Warbles, and Dr. Call's robots are all missing. There's some theories on why this is, such as Wally Warbles and Goopy Legrand being actually killed, and Dr. Call not being present due to his robot being too damaged from his fight with Cuphead and Mugman to continue moving. Then, there's what happens after the bad ending, which is talking about how it's implied that after the bad ending, the debtors will be severely punished by the devil for not giving their souls on time. Finally, we have Backwards Theme Song, which is about how if you wait after the bad ending, eventually the title theme will start playing in reverse. Here's the clip. Well, that was a good iceberg. Thanks to OKFly1879 for making the iceberg and for helping me with a bunch of the entries. I hope you enjoyed the video. Goodbye!